Good morning, church. Um, happy Easter to you all. And um, it, it is a little weird to see you guys in this online setting, but because today is Easter, uh, we are having an all-encompassing Easter service at our new location at Redwood City. So if you're welcome, if you are free, please well, um, come to our new location and worship with us there. But before we get started, let's just uh, start with a word of prayer to prepare our hearts for our Lord. Lord God, thank you so much for this day and thank you for, thank you for this um, great day that you have prepared for us. And, um, this day of celebration for your resurrection and your, um, your gift that you have given us um, this day. Lord Jesus, I pray that we would be able to remember um, you uh, and just recognize that what, what a great thing that you've done for us by dying on the cross. I pray that we would just try our best to really I will be reading from the English Standard Version. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day uh, and, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what, he ha what had happened. Amen. This is the word of God. You probably have somebody that has passed on to eternity, a close family member, maybe it's your mom or your dad, your grandparents. What do you do when you miss them? You can't see them on this earth, but you miss them. You'll probably visit their graveside or visit their ossuary and you'll be reminded of of uh, fond memories of them. Uh, as you know, uh, my grandma passed away two years ago. My uncle, who lives in Southern California, sent me a picture of himself taken at um, his mother's graveside, my grandmother's graveside. And uh, it brought me fond memories of my grandma, and I got to miss her. When we miss a loved person uh, who is deceased, we visit uh, their graveside or wherever they're buried. This past week, we've been looking in the book of Luke and reading especially the uh, last moments of Jesus' life. We saw how unjustly he was tried, how he suffered, and how he died on the cross. So if we miss Jesus, do we also visit his grave, his tomb to meet him? No, he's risen. Jesus is 
alive, in order to experience Jesus, in order to feel him again, we don't visit his tomb every year because he has risen. The tomb is empty. He's no longer in the grave. Then where is Jesus? That's the question we want to ask and answer this morning. Where is Jesus? As we understand where Jesus is right now, it will give us confidence to be with Jesus the more and trust him the more. Let's investigate into uh, from our scripture where Jesus is. Jesus died the day before the Passover. You know, Passover is Saturday, and he died on Friday. So he died on the pa before the day before Passover, and Passover came. And the next day, the first day after the Passover, the women, the followers of Jesus came to Jesus's tomb where he was as if they had been waiting for daybreak to happen on the first day after Passover they got up early and visited the tomb of Jesus with spices they knew where Jesus's body laid it was a place of death it was a place of finality so they brought spices with them to put on his body. But when they arrived there, they were startled. Their confidence of where Jesus' body laid was shaken. Because the tomb was open, the body was not there. It seemed obvious to them that somebody had stolen Jesus' body. But right then, right there, two angels in bright brilliant clothes shows up and announces to announce to these women why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery that's uh, the message bible's translation why do you looking why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery the women uh, were in a state of shock uh, had been in a state of shock because of the death of their master. And it never really occurred to them that uh, Jesus actually prophesied his resurrection. And when the angels explained to them that while Jesus was in Galilee with them, he told them that he will fulfill the prophecy and he will be in the tomb for three days. On the third day that he will rise, they had totally forgotten about that. But when the angels revealed this, reminded them, reminded them of this fact of Jesus, what Jesus had prophesied, it was as if a lock had been opened, a lock in their heart had been opened. And they believed the words of the angels. And with that great news, the good news, they went straight to the 11 disciples and shared this news with them. But to their surprise, the women's surprise, they would not believe. Even Peter. Peter rose up and he went to the tomb, straight to the tomb to find out for himself. And indeed, the body was not there. It was an empty tomb. But he too was just wondering what had happened. He would not believe. You know, Luke is very precise in his recording. He wants to let us know that this is something that happened historically, so he writes the name of the witnesses, the three women that were there. It was uh, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and also Mary, the mother of James, it's recorded. Despite the historical the witness, disciples would not believe. Go back to the or original question. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Going back to scripture, it uh, tells us very clearly in verse 6. He is not here, but he has risen. Amen. What is, where is here? Here is the place of death. Here is a tomb. Here is where all the dead people are. But when he when the angel says that he is not here, he's not with the dead people. 
but has risen. He is with the living. Yes, Jesus lives. That's where Jesus is. Jesus is among the living. But there's one thing to have faith in God, to have hope in God. However, if you're a cancer patient and your main hope is in medicine and in doctors, when you get a bad result, your life will be undone. You'll be tremendously shaken in your life. However, if your hope is in the Lord, in the risen Lord who is alive, you will have hope that is unshaken like a mountain soaring on eagle's wings because Jesus has resurrected. Because you have hope that someday, ultimately, you will win over death. You will have a resurrected body like Jesus Christ. And therefore, you can overcome any kinds of obstacles and difficulties or hopeless, seemingly hopeless situation in life. This is the believer who has their hope in the resurrected Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, where is your Jesus? Is Jesus still in the grave 2,000 years ago? Is your Jesus there in history and is he dead? Or is your Jesus alive in your heart and is he your main hope? Brothers and sisters, let us put our hope in the risen Lord. Amen. Let's put our hope on the risen, resurrected Lord. This Sunday morning, let's believe once again, put our hope through the Holy Spirit that Jesus is risen. And I put my anchor of hope on nothing else but Jesus alone. Not science, not money, not my future, but I bank I hope on the solid resurrection of Jesus Christ. And your faith and my faith will never be shaken as we put our hope on the risen Lord who rose from the grave this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this reminder from the book of Luke that he, Jesus, is not here among the dead, but he is risen. Father, we acknowledge that every other hope in our life is sinking sand. We hope so kind of hope. We have that kind of hope every day. But the only sure 